What is up guys and girls, welcome back to Burn the Coiler Painting, my name's Graham and welcome to episode 3. As you can tell, it's a little bit uh, different today, I'm in the middle of moving house and for those of you who are going to ask, why are you moving in the middle of lockdown? Because if I didn't, I'd have nowhere to live. Great! Now with that out of the way, today we're going to be painting a couple of bases in two different styles. One in more of an urban style and the other in more of a battle marsh, battlescape or battle mire. Battle, 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 battle. Muddy kind of uh, base. Both using very similar materials and paints to see if we get two different effects and two different styles out of similar things because I know that not many people have a vast array of paints, a vast array of materials laying around at home in the hobby space. To show you guys that you can do great bases but two different styles with the limited things you have at hand. So these are the things that I have just laying on my hobby table so that's what I'm going to be using today. Obviously sorry about the uh, if the, the difference in quality obviously in the middle of moving it's a little bit difficult so uh, this isn't going to be in the new setup this is just a transitional period for me finding out how I'm going to be filming where uh, where I am living now so uh, yeah let's get into it we collide we break down so this video is all about quick and easy bases that you can make yourself at home. You don't have to use the exact same materials as I am in this video. There's loads and loads of different materials you can either buy in the shops or find in your own backyard. So I want to make one urban base and one more kind of battlefield mud base. I get some of the cork. The cork I use is basically just a cork from like a cork board so it has like a, an adhesive on one side already which helps me to stick it in place and find out what looks best on the bases themselves. So once I've got some cork that I think will look really good for some rocks I get some PVA and I glue them into place and let them dry for a little bit just until they're tacky enough so they stay in place while I'm doing the rest of the base. So two of the main components for the bases I'll be using are from warworldgaming.com. It's the uh, army basing kit, one is the rocky sand, the other one is grey gravel. Now I've not used these basing materials before but actually they came up really well. I really like how they go on, I really like how easy they are to use as well. And they come in these nifty little pots and sets of two. Um, this isn't sponsored by them. I, I got these as a, as a gift for uh, for Christmas and it's the first time I'm using them. I wanted to uh, see how they go, so here we are. The others are all from Citadel. So Citadel texture paints, the basing paints, and uh, some Citadel skulls. None of the materials or the things I'm using in this video is sponsored by anyone. This is all the things that you see is either things that uh, I've acquired through uh, birthdays or, or I've got myself I've paid full price for so there's no sponsors in this video. So what I do I want around the main cork rocks uh, some more like smaller rocks so I guess the grey gravel I put it a little bit of a uh, PVA glue uh, raw PVA glue around the rocks and then just sprinkle on the the grey gravel around them and then just press it into place to make sure that you've got a good connection there. The battlefield base, uh, I went with the Citadel texture paints. I used two texture paints on this, on the, on the battlefield base. I used a ghrelin earth for the cracked, dry, muddy areas, and then the sterling battle mire, which is actually one of my favorites for the more trampled, disturbed earth look. Even though we're making these two bases out of similar materials, I wanted the two bases to have a little bit more character, individual character. So the urban base, I went to went down the the uh, the rocky sand and the War World Gaming products. So a good layer of the PVA glue down on the base. As you can see, putting the PVA glue on the urban base, I put far too much on there. I tried to spread it around over the different areas, but I had to take some off. It was far too much. So next time I'll be a little bit more careful with it. So when the bases are still wet, I get the skulls and what I do is just get all the mold lines off like with any other mini. Mold lines are the bane of the miniature world's existence. I find a good place where you can see the skull, but it's not gonna be in the way of any miniature that's gonna be on the base. 
is so when the PVA glue or texture paint that I've used, the skull actually embeds itself into that product. So it looks like it's actually in the battle scene itself. Now at this point, it's really important while it's still wet to get all the excess off the rim. So you've got a really nice clean rim when you come to paint it. If you don't do it now, you're gonna have a bad time trying to get all of that dried material off the rim of the base. It's not gonna look as neat. Do it now. You're doing yourself a favor down the line your base is now complete leave them to dry overnight so they're nice and solid for the painting on the next stage in my last video i said i wanted to start trying out some different products apart from citadel I actually just recently got some uh, Vallejo surface primers, white and black. So I've really enjoyed using them. So I use the Vallejo black surface primer to prime everything first off. So give it a good thin coat, uh, let it dry, and then keep repeating that until you have a good even coat of black primer. This also helps to seal all of your work in as well, so you won't get little bits of rock and stone falling off your base. Uh, you then paint them in their perspective colors. So I used a gray for the urban base, and I used a brown for the battlefield base. With the shades, I didn't just use one shade for one base and uh, another shade for another. I used a variety of shades on both. So the urban base, because rock and stone isn't just grey, it's a multitude of different colours. So I used a multitude of different shades. Now I did this with my cliff side terrain piece I did uh, a couple of years back and he used several different shades over a grey base and dry brushing and it came out really well so this is the same technique that I'm using just on a much smaller scale so the shades that I used were uh, just a blue wash, a black wash, a sepia wash and a brown wash they could be any company of your choice be that Army Painter, Citadel, or that Vallejo it doesn't matter what product it is as long as you have a multitude of different colours so they're the colours I use so blue, black brown and a sepia or, ye or yellow if you don't have a sepia. Now with those washes I put a, a brown and sepia wash over the battlefield base all over in different areas just splodged around but focusing more brown on the rocks and more sepia on the ground so you have different color values on the two different areas of the base just to separate them a little bit. With dry brushing later on, you do tie all the colors over, like Terminus Stone dry brush compound or something like that later on. So breaking up the color now, don't worry about too much about it because you're gonna tie all those colors back in later with the dry brushing. With the urban base, I used the blue wash for the ground and a black and sepia wash for the stones with the same sort of techniques as the battlefield base, just to break up those two different colors so it's not a flat, base colour. Once the washes were done on the bases then I went on to paint the skulls. Now I just used a screaming skull for Citadel which is like a light bone colour and then I washed it with a flesh wash. I'm really liking uh, flesh wash at the moment. The tone of it goes well with a lot of things like gold uh, and, and in this case bone. So I gave two thin coats with the wash. Once that had dried, I went back over with Screaming Skull and glazed that over until it was a nice finish on all the high points of the skull. So the, the eyebrows, the bridge of the nose, the top of the skull as well, just to give it a little bit more character. Now it's monologue time. While you're doing your bases, don't worry too much about getting the details on little character bits like the skulls on your bases perfect and really really good because it's not the bases that you're paying attention to when you put a mini it's your mini that you want people to pay attention to that's one of the reasons why i love bases so much because they're so quick easy and really effective but you don't need to really strain yourself while doing them at the end of the day yes they do add to the character and the story of what that miniature is doing at the time but you don't need to press yourself to make them the best work you can you can get away with having an okay base and a really good miniature is better than a really good base and an okay miniature. Once the skull and the washes were done, I then went over with the dry brush. Now this is where you can really pick out all those great details of the basing materials that you use. So the, the gravel, the rocks, or the texture paints, 
I think dry brushing is brilliant for basing. It's really quick, it's really easy, and it just gets all those little details that will take forever if you're layering to really pop. Now, some of the dry brushing paints I use are special Citadel dry brushing paints. You don't need to use these. If you don't have them, don't worry. All you do is put a little bit on your brush, scrub it off on some tissue paper, and then apply the paint like you would normally dry brushing. The only difference between the dry brush paints and normal paints is that they're slightly thicker, so you don't have as much moisture with the paint so they're slightly easier to use for dry brushing. Colors I used for the dry brushing is on the battlefield base. I use a medium brown, a light brown, and then a very light stone color. And on the urban base, I used a medium gray, a light gray, and then the terminus stone again, just to finish it off. Now it's that very light stone color you use right at the end on your final dry brush to tie all the other colors in. What I do is I add some grass tufts. I have the Citadel ones that come on just a plastic sheet. You just pick them off with tweezers and put them on. You, some people put a little bit of super glue on the where you're putting them. I don't bother because I found it once you've pressed them on properly, they don't actually come off. But if you're worried about them coming off, just put a little dab of super glue where you want them and plop them on that super glue. One problem I do find with these grass tufts is that they are quite large. So what I tend to do is I usually cut them in half or cut a little bit off and then fit them around say a rock or in between rocks. Just where you think grass would naturally grow and wouldn't be trampled on. Just to give it that little bit more realism. At this point your base is going to look fantastic. They're going to look brilliant for the tabletop. One thing I do like to add is pigment powder. You can get loads of different variations and colors of this stuff but all it is is basically the, the dry pigment of paint without any moisture so it's just a powder. What I do is get a, a very old brush, get a tiny amount on the brush and then just scrub it into places where dust will settle, dry mud around the rocks, just to give it a little bit more of a matte, kind of dusty feel. This is great, especially for the urban base. And I think it really finishes off and gives it that little bit more of a realistic effect to all your bases. And now your bases are ready for the tabletop. that was how I did the two different styles of bases with similar materials and paints available to me. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have, remember to hit that like button and hit that notification bell as well so you get all the updates. I've got Instagram as well, the Burns Aquila Painting Instagram. Go and say hi over there. If you like it, let me know in the comments. If you didn't, let me know in the comments. If there's anything that you think I could do better or improve on, let me know in the comments. But until then guys, take it easy out there. Peace.